Ryan Reynolds here for, I guess, my 100th Mint commercial. No, 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 don't, no, no, no. I mean, honestly, when I started this, I thought I only have to do like four of these. I mean, it's unlimited premium wireless for $15 a month. How are there still people paying two or three times that much? I'm sorry, I shouldn't be victim blaming here. Give it a try at mintmobile.com slash save whenever you're ready. $45 upfront payment equivalent to $15 per month. New customers on first three-month plan only. Taxes and fees extra. Speed slower above 40 gigabytes. See details. Hello and welcome to Audiobook Connection, behind the scenes with the creative teams. I'm Becky Parker Geist and I'm your host. Audiobook Connection is your place to learn about the audiobook creative process in discussions between the authors, narrators, producers, and post production teams that bring them all together, as well as guests who have listened to the audiobooks and have questions for the creative teams. This podcast is sponsored by Pro Audio Voices, helping great stories come alive through audiobook production and marketing. Hi, everyone. I am really excited. Today, I have with me Todd Walker. Todd is the marketing strategist for the audiobook marketing program that's offered by Pro Audio Voices. He has also run his own website design and development firm, Entropic Studio, for over two decades. He provides marketing coaching and consultation to his clients, and he's worked with as a coach for marketing expert and mentor Steve Napolitan. And Todd has had the opportunity to work with some really big names, especially in the Bay Area, the North Face, California University of Berkeley, San Francisco Theological Seminary, the entire Novato School District, and yeah, he says just about every nonprofit in Marin, which is pretty impressive. So, Todd, thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, awesome. I'm so glad to be here. Thank you, Becky. So let's kind of start at the beginning. And what would you say is one of the biggest challenges that you're seeing when people first come to you for marketing consultation? That's a great question, Becky. It's amazing how many people get caught up in the the bells and whistles of a website. You know, they want a very dynamic slider with some movement and pictures sliding in and text coming and flashing. And they want to use the new technologies like parallax and, you know, have things moving at different speeds. And that's all fine and dandy. But Oftentimes, I have to bring my clients back to the basics ah, yes. and, and really get them to understand you need a goal. Why, why, why do you have your website? What's the goal of your website? Right. What's the point? What's the point of your website? Yeah. And to that point, <laughs> what do you expect your client to do? And so when uh-huh. we talk about this, it's, it's really like, okay, your client landed here. Now, understanding that as of the latest statistics, they say you have three to five seconds to grab your user's attention. The bad news is that goldfish have a larger attention span than your clients. That's the bad news. (laughs) Three to five seconds. That's trimmed down over the years. (laughs) It's got, yeah. People's attention spans, right? Because they're used to going like this. Swiping, yep. Swiping and swiping and swiping, right? So they're yeah. used to new information, new pictures as fast as possible, and they just go through it. So knowing that, it's really important for us to figure out, one, why do you have this website? And number two, what are your expectations for the client? And by that, I mean... When they land on your website, and I often give the analogy of a brick and mortar store. That helps people kind of understand what I mean. And so if someone was to walk into your store looking for something in particular, would you just stand behind your desk and let them wander around aimlessly and then leave? Probably not. That wouldn't be very good. No, probably not at all. They would walk in the door and you would say, oh my gosh, Becky, welcome to my store. What are you looking for? Oh, you're looking for yogurt? That's on aisle one. That's that's right over here. Let me guide you. Here's the yogurt. Is this what you were looking for? And so 
that analogy works with a website in that I land on the website. There's a lot of beautiful pictures. Oh, we like that. But after a bit, looking at pictures is nice, but I could do that anywhere. I could, I could go to YouTube and watch kittens. And, and that might be more interesting. So what is it that you want the client to do? Because within that three to five seconds, we should state that on the website. Hey, Becky, are you looking for yogurt? Click here. So oftentimes, I have to bring the client back all the way to the beginning and say, all of that is all fine and dandy. All of the bells and whistles some pretty pictures and sliders. That's all fine. But what are we asking the client to do? The client needs to understand that they're in the right place, that you're offering this product that they're looking for, and where to find it. Where can I find it? So that's the first level of figuring it out. Now, the customer journey goes all the way until they, A, sign up for your program, buy your book, purchase your product, sign up for the newsletter, what, whatever it is that we're asking them for, we call it a CTA or a call to action. And so it's really important for us to state that. And in this example, once I say the product that you're looking for is here and they click on it and now they're on a page where that product is, let's say they don't have enough information to buy that product yet. What else would be helpful to this person so that they would have enough information to buy that product? Well, if it's a book, maybe it would be important for them to know a little bit about the author. So on that page, it could say, yes, click here to buy this book. Or if you would like more information about the author, click here. So I'm giving them two choices. One, you could buy, complete the transaction right now buy it, put in your credit card, purchase it. Or I'm going to give you some more information that is going to help the client decide that this is the purchase that they want, right? So thinking about it, I'm like, ooh, maybe the author information would be helpful. What else might be helpful? Oh, maybe some testimonials from people who also read the book. Oh, that might be nice. Okay. And for the audio book, maybe a sample of the audio. Maybe audio sample. What? You're blowing my mind here, Becky. Yes, having that as an option. So what I'm trying to get people to do is come back to the beginning. Let's understand the basics of what the website is there for. It's to sell our product or get them to sign up for a newsletter or get them to sign up for our program or buy this, or buy that. And so oftentimes, we just need to take it back to the beginning and then figure out what is the purpose and then what is the customer journey like, right? Mm -hmm. And maybe what are some other things that they could do while they're there? Sign, you know, Purchasing our book would be great. Getting the audio book would be great. But also signing up for a newsletter so that they could stay in touch right. with us. That is also great. So yeah. we should have yeah. that. So it is possible to have multiple calls to action that would benefit us. And so, right. again, once we... But do we want to pile them all into no, one place? No, no. And that's... No, I didn't think so. That's no. where the plan comes in. Then we run into... <laughs> right? <laughs> so, yes, having goals and having a plan in place. So once we understand those fundamentals and we write it down, what are the things that I would like this potential client and customer to do? Purchase my product, sign up for my newsletter, you know, do this, do that, make a list. And then we look at how to integrate that into the website. And that's where the other pieces come into play. That's where design comes into play. So let's say I have two buttons. One is to purchase my product on the product page. And the other one was to get to know the author a little better or look at testimonials and read those. Now, the most important CTA is to buy. So that one's going to be right. colorful. That one's going to stand out a little bit from the rest of the page. That's where design comes into play, right? We call it UI, user interface. And that is where the designer could say, 
let's make it red. Let's make it blue. Let's make it bright yellow, right? So that it does stand out on the page. And the other button could be a little bit more muted, right? Because we don't want them the same color. We don't want them to compete. We really are trying to make it as easy as we can for the customer to complete the journey as we would like them to complete it, right? We're still leaving the decision up to them, but we're making the button that we want a little bit more attractive. We're making it stand out a little bit more. And so when you ask me, what am I seeing in in a lot of people is that they haven't thought this out. It it hasn't been very well thought out. And, And sometimes they might have both buttons and both buttons are transparent with a piece of text in it. So I don't even see that they're buttons, mm-hmm. right? It, it doesn't stand out on the page. It looks like the same text as the description of the product. It, it, all the text looks the same. So from a visual standpoint, there's no way I'm going to be able to determine what you guys want me to do within a three to five second period. And back to that story, brick and mortar analogy, it's like letting the client wander around looking for something and no one's helping them. And they're just wandering aimlessly through your store. And at some point, it's that's going to get frustrating for the client and they're going to leave. And that's not what we right. want. We want them engaged. Right. And the, and that help that you're talking about, you know, sometimes uh, I would say like one of the first thing that that may pop into our minds when you talk about, you know, stepping forward and saying, how can I help you? Or those little, you know, chat things, you know, where either you have to commit a huge number, you know, a large resource, whether it's your own time or or paying someone else's for someone else's time. But what you just described in terms of letting the design actually be that helper yep. in a visual kind of way, that that's yep. really, that's great. Yeah. Yeah, we don't want to let them wander aimlessly. That is the biggest mistake. That is where you are going to see people land on your page and leave. Land on your page and leave. And if you're looking at your analytics, which is the data of what is happening with your website, you're going to see a lot of people landing on your page and then a lot of people leaving. And you're you're going to be confused as to why are so many people coming to my page and, and then leaving? Um, it'd be very similar to like, why are so many people walking into my store and then turning around and walking back out? Because we allowed them to wander around aimlessly and not find what they were looking for. All right. So I know that part of this also is in terms of that guidance, that clarity, but also just helping people feel like they're in the right place has yeah. to do with those words that we use. Yeah, right? absolutely. What, what what are the words we're putting in that copy? And, you know, are there so many that we can't possibly, we just kind of have that text block, mm. you know, sort of zone out experience, you know, where we can't really see it because we're looking for something quickly, trying to identify if we're in the right place and what we see is this big block of text. But knowing, first of all, that we we need to trim it down, we yep. as writers, you know, we like to, yes. we like words. But <laughs> but how do we figure out what are the words that we're going to use that are going to get people to buy our memoir or our you know psychological thriller or our children's book or whatever it is? How do we figure out what those words are, what those key words are? Yeah, so as a designer, as a So we call that the UI, the user interface. I I went over that. The other type of design is called UX, and that's the user experience. So we're kind of talking about them both. And it's very important in the user experience, which is what you're talking about, is that if it's true, I have three to five seconds when I land on the page, then the words really do matter. Am I going to blather on and on and on? So they're reading all of this stuff and they still haven't gotten to the point, you know, and I'm reading, reading, reading. After a bit, I'm going to leave. 
right? Our attention spans are shorter than a goldfish's attention span. Does a goldfish have time to read all of that text? No. So what we want to do is give them a choice. Here's a little blurb. My book is about this. My children's book is about this. It is for the ages of this. And click here to read more. So I'm giving you a little tidbit of a sample, a a sentence, maybe two sentences at the most. It best describes what you could expect if I click on the read more and I go to the read more page. It is a book for children aged three to five. It is about bears and it helps children at bedtime. It helps them calm down and gets them ready for bed. Uh-huh. So so the people who are then looking for it are those adults yes. who are yep. trying to get their kids calmed down and ready yes. for bed. Yes, and in that two or three sentences, right. I know that that is the general idea of the book. I know who it's for. And I know that if I click on the read more, I will find out more information in regards to that very brief description of what you just told me. And so now I click on read more, boom. Now I read a little bit more about the bears and I see some pictures maybe, because that's always nice. And it tells me a little bit more about how those bears help my children prepare for bed and get ready for bed. And so... Right, because that's really the problem, isn't it? Yeah. You really yeah. want to be clear. that That's the problem we're trying to solve. Yeah. And so we don't want to give them so much information there in the beginning that they're bogged down trying to figure out what this book is about, who is it for, who should buy it, and who should we read it to, right? Is this an adult book? Is it a book for adults to read to children? And if it is to read to children, is there a purpose? Is it teaching kids about mindfulness? Is it teaching kids how to be ready for bed? Is it teaching kids how to share? right? And so all of these things are really important in that brief description so that it gives me an idea. And it's not a mystery when I click read more to find out. It's it's not a surprise, right? I, I want to be very purposeful when I have people going on this customer journey. And so you're right, words matter. That brief description, this is what you can expect click here to find out more. And then on that page, because I chose to go read more, you you didn't throw up all of this words and verbiage for me to have to read through in the beginning. You told me exactly what I could expect. I chose to click read more. And now I'm on a page with way more information. And that's okay, because guess what? I chose to be there. But people (laughs) make the mistake of putting it on the homepage and making people read through it all to figure it out. And that's the mistake. That's the mistake. Do not make me read through all of this stuff just to realize I'm in the wrong place and this isn't the book that I was looking for. Yeah, sounds a little bit like in your retail store analogy. It's like trying to fit all the products in the store in your front window. And that is a huge yeah. mistake. You'll notice people don't do that. Yeah. That's not a thing. I do. Yeah. I have noticed that people don't. <laughs> that's, that's not a thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's not a thing. That's great. Yeah. And using that same analogy, it's like once you choose to go to the yogurt aisle, then you're going to learn more about the cottage cheese and the sour cream, et cetera, because you're in that aisle. Yeah. Oh, look, there's cashew yogurt. Oh, it's non-dairy. Perfect. I need that. So (laughs) if I'm choosing to be in that aisle, then it's okay to have all the information about that there. But if I did not choose, don't force me to read about all of that yogurt when in fact I wanted something else. Yeah. Yeah. Let's pause for a moment. We'll be right back. Looking for a way to get some direction and help with building your author platform and marketing your books and audiobooks? Pro Audio Voices created the audiobook marketing program to help authors like yourself get the support they need at an affordable rate. 
We work with you to bring your goals together with our marketing expertise to create a customized blueprint, the tools and materials to build your platform, step-by-step -step instructions, and the team to help you all along the way. For more information, visit ProAudioVoices.com and click on Audiobook Marketing Program. Pro Audio Voices, helping great stories come alive through audiobook production and marketing. Now, we hear a lot about keywords. We talk a lot about keywords and like, what are the words that we need to have in our, you know, titles on our website and, and to have in our, you know, showing up in multiple places and, you know, to get people to trust that they're in the right spot. Yes. And how do we figure out, you know, what are some ways? I, I'm, don't, I'm not going to ask you to go into SEO analysis. Yes. So what I would <laughs> but, say to you, Becky, is I want you to pretend that you're searching for the product that you own. So if you're selling a book on bears that help children at night go to sleep, that's your product then I want you to pretend to search for that product on Google. What, what would you type in? Mm -hmm. Children's book? Mm, yeah, that's pretty general. You might get about 5 million results. So you're going to have to search through 5 million to find that exact one. That would be a mistake. I would say children's book about bedtime with bears. So all of a sudden, I'm narrowing it down via how I would search for it. So oftentimes, mm -hmm. I put myself in the place of the client. I put myself in that chair. And I say, what would I type in to find myself <laughs> or my product, right? right? And so right. Right. all of a sudden, then you're like, oh, okay, okay. Children's books, bedtime, bears, Okay, what else might I type in? And I, I might even find other products that are similar and look at the words that right. they're using because guess what? They came up first. And if they're coming up first in Google, then guess what? They're winning. Right, right. So you do not have to reinvent the wheel. There are people that might have written something similar or might have something in a similar category, right? And so oftentimes, right. mm -hmm. level one, put in the words that you would search to find yourself or your product. But I mean, your product. And so level two, look at who's coming up number one for that thing, for those words that you typed in. And there turns out there is another book. It didn't have bears, but it was about children. It was for children. And it also helped them go to sleep. Turns out it was bunnies, which is fine. But I could look at that and I could see what words are they using, right? What, what are they doing to make it clear to their users that they have a book that is for adults to read to children at night that helps them go to sleep? Right. And what if we already have some reviews or we have, you know, books, as you say, you know, that are similar to what we've got and they have reviews? How might we learn from those reviews, what kind of words to use? Yeah. So what we want to stay away from is generic reviews. This book was great for my children. My children really enjoyed it. I love the book. Mm -hmm. Right. No words in there that are <laughs> going to be particularly narrowing <laughs> no. or no. helpful, right? <laughs> Although we like the review, yay. <laughs> it was a great review and you could put it on your website, right? Yeah. But if yeah. we're going to, you're right, if we're going to use them for marketing, then we would want something that had those, you mentioned them before, keywords, right? Those keywords, the words that we are going to use in our title, the words that we're going to right. use on the front page in our CTA. If you're looking for a children's book that helps with bedtime, click here, right? So we get children's book, we get bedtime, we can put bears in there if we wanted, right? But, but once we have that list, Becky, of keywords, then that's going to help us in our titling. That's going to help us in our CTA, our call to action. Right. And it's also going to help us in SEO, which, which you mentioned right. 
and and also in uh, in our book descriptions, yes. which are going to be plastered all over the yes. the internet. Yes, right. And so oftentimes, yeah. I find that clients are using very generic descriptions that that when presented to someone else that might not know is too vague. It is it, it's too vague. It doesn't really get down to the meat and potatoes, if you will, of what the book is right. about and who is it for. So what is the book about and who is it for? Because again, if we have that three to five second window, I want to make it as clear as possible to the potential person that wants to buy it, right? I, I want to make right. it as easy as I can for them to find it. And then once they found me, I want to let them know they're in the right spot. Yeah. I think also, I, I was thinking about how, about this thing of the, what's in it for me? <laughs> you know, the, this, uh, you know, when when people are out there going to websites, they're most often going to websites uh, they might be going to a friend's website to say, oh, you know, yeah, I, I'll take a look at your website. Well, most of the time we're out there because we're trying to solve some yep. kind of problem, right? Whether it's getting those kids yep. to bed at night or, you know, maybe it's like, oh, I really need something to listen to, you know, while I'm washing the dishes, yep. you know, because otherwise I'll just, you know, I, I just feel bored with it or something, you know, or I might. I'm going on a road there trip. There any number of reasons. To Portland. Going on a road trip. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, you got to have something to listen to. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So th when they're coming to our websites, they're actually trying to solve some kind of problem. And if we can figure out what that is, yep. then we can speak Absolutely. to that with the words yes. that we choose. So for, it, right. for your example, yeah. someone lands on your website. Why would they be at your website? Because they're interested in an audio book. But yeah. some people could be working on an audio book and it's not working out for them and they have questions. That would be a different client than someone who is just writing a book and doesn't know if they need an audio book. Someone told them that they did. And now they're just doing some research mm -hmm. to be like, is that necessary? Or do in, does anyone listen mm -hmm. to audio books? Right. So uh, again, <laughs> one is sort of a exploratory. Someone's going there to explore the audiobook realm. That person is looking for more copy and more descriptions and more data. And they're probably going to stay a lot longer on your website going through your mm -hmm. testimonials, your client list. What does it mean to make an audiobook? How popular are audiobooks? Right. So they're going to have a different client journey on your website. That person that has already been starting their audiobook and realized that it's super difficult and they didn't have the right tools and know how to do it. And now they're looking for a professional. They're probably going to go to a specific page to learn about your services and they're going to contact you to ask right. specific questions that they have about the technicalities of an audiobook. Those are two different experiences. We want to make sure that right. they have them both because those are two problems that we're right. solving with one website. Right. And for our for you know our authors who are listening, you know, they may be looking for a print book or an audiobook or an ebook, you know, which are different yep. products for different audiences, but there's a decision point where, you know, if they want to learn maybe just more about the content, that might be one option. But if they want to, you know, buy one of those specific mm. formats, then that may be a, a place where there's a, we'll say a, a decision-making yes. button or decision-making yep. buttons, yep. right? Yep. Yeah. So again, and I'm glad that you brought that up, yours is, is much more complex in that sense. Right. And that makes it even more important to bring it back to the basics so that we understand what are the possible CTAs, calls to action, that Becky needs on her website. Look at all the potential customers and look at all of the different wants and needs that they have. And so that's why it's really important. And I find myself doing this with companies that are you know, five to 10 million a year and uh, people that are, you know, making a few thousand or a few hundred. It doesn't matter. 
we really need to come back and understand those things for it to be effective. And it doesn't matter if you're going to spend a million dollars on your website, $500 on your website. Those are the, those are the most important things that we're, that we're making the website for. Right. Yeah. I want to circle back to something you said really early on uh, when yeah. we were talking about that basics. What's the website for? And and then you mm-hmm. mentioned the plan, you know, having have, knowing what your goal is and then having a plan. And one of the things that I wanted to bring up is that in the book marketing world, for example, there are lots of book marketers who are really trying to help provide value and everything by providing a kind of templated plan. Mm. You know, these are all the things you need to do when you launch your book. And, you know, you can get, you know, checklists as as lead magnets, you know. Yep. But talk to us a little bit about some of the differences between trying to use that kind of plan versus having a plan that is custom developed for you. Yeah. So or for the author, I, w- I will say. So the template that you get is just the template that you get. So you're going to have to figure out when you fill it out, what CTAs are you going to use? So for your website, Becky, we have five to 10 possible CTAs that a potential client might want to use. Now, the templates that you right. get, we're lucky if we have one or two. And now all of a sudden, it's up to the person whose product it is to determine how to get those one or two in the in the boxes of the template where the CTAs are. And if you have right. more, right. then what? You don't have them or you leave them out? So it does work in some situations, but there's so many nuances that right. it's really... Right challenging sometimes if you don't do this every day. If this is not your wheelhouse, you might look at it and be like, that looks fine. And I would look at it and go, it it is not clear at all on what you're asking the client to do. And then they'll look at it and go, well, I want them to click buy here. And I'm like, yeah, that's at the bottom of the page after they read like 20 paragraphs of text. Do you expect them to read that in under five seconds? And then they're like, oh, crap. Oh, you're right. So then I say, okay, let's move that button up to the top. And then let's change your text so that it's short and sweet and concise. And someone could read it and make a decision in three to five seconds on whether to go further. Now, oftentimes the suggestions that I'm making are simple, but they're Mm -hmm. so important that oftentimes they get overlooked. Right. And I'm telling you, I go into websites that people have spent a million dollars on and it's the same mistakes. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. It is not clear. The customer journey has not been well thought out. I can't tell the difference between this button and that button. There's two buttons next to each other that look the same. Are you honestly telling me they're both as important as the other one? Because one is buy your product and one is sign up for a newsletter. I don't think they're yeah. the same. And just to clarify, because I know that, you know, for, for those of us who have, you know, are more familiar with the customer value journey, those words or something similar to those that, you know, many times that's referring to a kind of like an email sequence or, you know, mm. got to have a lead magnet. And then, you know, and what you're describing is really more of a path that yes. is a path on the website. I want my visitor to click here. I want them to do this. I want them to go there. Rather than, it's not about building out a whole funnel pipeline journey, funnel. It's, you know, so for those who are familiar with that, I just wanted to highlight that what you're talking about is is very kind of fundamental, basic way to start looking at your website and seeing how you can make it more effective. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you for that clarification. Lead funnels, lead magnets, pipelines, that is all very valuable. That is not what we're talking about here. If you've done all of that work and you've gotten them to your website, then it's super important to really understand what we're talking about now because you've spent a lot of money and a lot of time getting them to the website. 
And now it's super important. And I love how Becky put it, that the path is clear. The path is clear. Right. So within that first three to five seconds, they see the call to action about your product and they choose learn more. And now they're on the product page and they're reading about your book. They're reading about the audio book. They're reading about what you have for sale on that page. And by taking it a step further, yes, there's a buy now button, but what if they don't have enough information and they need more? What else could we offer them besides the buy now? If they don't have the buy now and they're not ready to make that decision and the only button there is buy now, then they're going to leave. That's their only choice. If they don't want that choice, there is no other choice. So give them another choice. Click here to learn about the author. Click here to read the testimonials. Click here to learn about the other books I've written. Yeah. One of the things I love about what you were just talking about here is that, you know, for some of us, we might go to a website. We already know we want the book or the audio book. We've made that decision. We're just going to buy. And we don't want to wade through a whole bunch of other no. stuff just to be able to do that one click that we went there for, yeah. right? But others will come and they're in the exploring yeah. mode. Or they're a personality type that just requires more detailed research, more information in order to make that kind yeah. of decision. So being able to provide for both, both experiences yeah. with different people. I think is uh, is something that we don't always yeah. think about, you know. So if we're like creating, you know, and when we're thinking about keywords and how we might begin a search for those, that if we we put ourselves in that seat, yeah. but we also need to think about some of the other people <laughs> and and what their circumstances are, right? When they're in their seats, yes, uh, you know, and finding our website, yeah. yes, yes. So I'm, cool. I'm glad that yeah. you mentioned that. There are different person out. There are people out there that read the manual when they buy something. Yeah. Maybe you don't. Maybe you go to Ikea and buy a piece of furniture and you put it together without looking at the manual. Right. There are other people that will read it cover to cover before attempting to put anything together. And they will get each piece and each part and make sure that they have it, line it up, lay it out and do all that. So you're right. There are different personalities if you don't uh, let people have a wrench, ha- let them have that Allen wrench but until they have read all the instructions. <laughs> <laughs> they they may not buy. <laughs> right, right. So yes, I'm glad you mentioned busy. that. They got other things to do. Yeah, yeah. 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 So you, you're right there. And, and again, that's what we're offering those secondary buttons. So we have the CTAs, our call to action. We determine what is the most important one on this page. Sign up for our newsletter, buy our book, you know, things like that. But What is a secondary one? What is one button that we could put next to it that is not as attention grabbing? It's a little bit more subtle Mm -hmm. because we don't want them competing. Mm -hmm. And so that's the button that says, oh, if do you need more information about the author? Click here and I'll tell you all about myself. Oh, you want to know what other people say about me and, and have said about this book? Go click here and you could read all these amazing testimonials. Oh, right. you want to know if I've written right. another book and, and what those might be? Go ahead and click here. You can read about all the other books that, that I've written before. So again, thinking, and, th- and this is where it comes back to the basics of just sitting down and thinking, who are the clients? What might they need? And at what stage right. might they need it? And then we could go yeah. add our button, add our text. Uh, you know, the changes are right. are very simple, but they're right. so important. They often get overlooked because people love talking about the pretty pictures and talking about the motions and the sliders and the, mm-hmm. you know, all of that kind of stuff. They, they really get distracted. Right. And so it's important for us to bring them back to the basics right. of why are we here? Why did you build this website? And what is the path? that you would like the customer to travel. Let's shine a flashlight on that path and make it obvious that this is where you could go if you're looking for this. Yeah, yeah, great. Todd, I want to thank you so much (laughs) for being with me today. Oh, my pleasure. And for 
helping us to like really hone in on this basic but very essential component mm. of our marketing so that we can make our websites be more effective yeah. for us and a better customer journey for uh, all the people who come to visit. Todd, again, is the marketing strategist for the audiobook marketing program. And I am so thrilled that you are heading up that team. Thank you, Todd. Yes, thank you, Becky. And thank you, everyone. It's great to be here. Thanks for joining us for Audiobook Connection, behind the scenes with the creative teams. Please take a moment to subscribe at audiobookconnection.com. The podcast is sponsored by Pro Audio Voices, helping great stories come alive through audiobook production and marketing. Learn more at ProAudioVoices.com. Again, thanks for being with us, and please join us next week. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.